organization, Ehala Kasa, which is led by Sir Black and is located in Ghana. Renshi poetry is a Japanese form, which means linked or chained poetry, and we found it an apt metaphor. In Renshi poetry, one partner starts a chain of poems on a theme and then sends it via mail or email to a partner who takes the last line of the received poem to start their own poem. In our project, we did this for nine weeks, well, ideally, or nine poems with 12 partner pairs. The project actually lasted over a year and with all of our poems, we had enough for a book. We will be sharing um, our reading from this book, Our Spirits Carry Our Voices with you tonight. This book reflects the community and the journey as well as the poems and who we became after learning about each other. So I'll be introducing each poet and say who their paired partner was and where they are calling in from. So we all started here in Oakland, but we've scattered around since that. So um, our first reader tonight is Tyrese Dean Brown and her partner poet was Jewel King Speaks. And Tyrese is calling us from Texas tonight. So welcome Tyrese. Thank you all. I will be reading one of the very first poems that I exchanged with Jewel, my partner. Um, the prompt was, I am from. I am from strange orange skies, kids swinging low on branches of tall oak trees, plummeting into cool blue waters as they surrender their bodies to torches of hot summer heat. Belly flops into open graves as the city burns from record highs. Flesh melts under flames of confederacy. It is a beautiful disaster of history where my granny picked honeysuckles and her granny picked cotton, where running barefoot is preferred over the shackles of shoelaces. And matriarchs yell, close the storm door as dirty feet exit the place of no return. Sunday dinner cooks on the stove, the aroma calling the outside dog to pace around the back porch, ears perking as prayers to keep her safe and clean, end with amens and off your elbows. Yellow bones blacken quick under the pressure of colorism at the dinner table. I come from young stretched skin, tiny frames carrying marked bellies, targets for new oppression. Sisters gathering, supporting her squat as she, like Sumo, wrestles pain and burden into the world. I come from long runs in the woods with galloping dogs at ashed hills, breaking record time as the wind tries to catch hold of quick legs like whips on bare hides. I come from long talks with caterpillars and fireflies, way past the time of segregation, ladybugs and deers sit on the doorstep as honey sweet dew captures the James River in tiny bubbles. I come from sitting in between her soft brown thighs as she greases my scalp and hums, cigarette smoking, smoke mixing with my hair as she inhales with every note of song and twist of her hand. I come from down home, deep down home, so deep lights don't twinkle brighter than the stars. I come from sin and pleasure, grinding to slow jams and basement parties. His hot breath on your neck switches when you come home nine months late. I come from the South. Thank you. Thank you, Tyrese. Our next reader is her partner, poet Jewel King Speaks. And Jewel is calling us all the way from Ghana. Welcome, Jewel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, personally, that was what started our exchange. And her last sentence was, I come from the South. So I started that with my poem. And I like the piece because it was telling me basically where she came from. So there's mine. So mine is titled From the Loins of Yasantua, and it goes like, 
I come from the south. I come from the east. I come from the north. I come from the west. Seeing as the west being, they said nothing good can come out of me. But one evening, Eve grew from a rib cage, brought forth forbidden fruits. She took a bite and invited me to a feast, which got us kicked out of Eden to Earth. We are the first astronauts to discover Earth without a rocket, but on foot. I am crazily amazing. I come from excellence, stronger than Neil Armstrong. I am the first black guy to walk on the moon with black shoes and white socks, but I backslide when I do the moonwalk, bleached the truth and ended my life, forgetting that we are black because life isn't fair. I come from today. I come from tomorrow. Both tomorrow and today have got a two. So if tomorrow never comes, then today never comes too. We've been living a dream that never came to pass. But my yesterday hunted my today with an arrow. So I screamed for tomorrow. That was a trap because tomorrow never comes. I come from nowhere. I come from the loins of Ya Asantua, the brave woman that led an army to war. I come from Ya Asantua. I come from Sarah Batman, the actual Batman before the fictional Batman. The woman who was degraded and disgraced by the westerners simply because she had big lips, big breasts, big buttocks, and wide hips. I think she was the first woman stripped naked and placed on the display against her will. But today, our black women do it willingly, thinking their buttocks are their greatest asset. But instead, they are disgracing my origin. I come from Sarah Batman. I come from black. I am the knight in the beginning that paved way for the light. I wasn't greedy. I am the moon. I am darkness. I come from a place that makes everyone stagger in jealousy. I come from Africa, where, civil, where civilization began without guns, where Madagascar, the island, saw into the future and prophesied way before prophets. This is where we drink. From, the, from supernatural cups. We drink from the horn of Africa. I come from Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jewel. The exchange between Jewel and Tyrese was just phenomenal and they still keep in contact today and as we all do, but I just really wanted to give a special shout out to that exchange. Um, up next is Crystal Tete, who also goes by Maragana, and she will be um, reading, calling us in from Ghana. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Carla. Uh, greetings, beautiful ones. I'll be reading Daydreaming by Mama Makeda, also known as Sandra Hooper Mayfield. When I get to Ghana, I'm gonna wrap myself in six yards of white cotton, wear beads, anklets, bracelets, and sometimes I'm a wear a crown. I'm a garden barefoot under the influence of moonlit music and juju. When I get to Ghana, I'm a cook gumbo and jollof, and my house will smell like you want to stay forever. I'm a sit wide-legged on the shore, exhale hate, and breathe Africa. Then I'm a lay down and let the ebb and flow wash the white away. When I get to Ghana, I'm a fall in black, black love, let him press his body on mine. Then I'm a sit on his lap, swing my feet, and feed us some watermelon. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Um, Am I muted? No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. Thank you so much. Um, our next reader is um, calling us in from Detroit, uh, Noemi Rose Gonzalez Barrias. Welcome. Thank you. And I wish it was Detroit. It's three hours north and uh, rural. So the connection is sometimes the great digital divide. 
I'll do my best. My partner is from Cote d'Ivoire. I learned how to say that from Carla, who taught there. Her name is Ozzy Adoa, and this is her poem. She paved the way, Dominique Folaru Utara by Ozzy Adoa. She paved the way through since he became president and she became first lady of Cote d'Ivoire. You only hear about her when it concerns child welfare, her charity foundation's name, Children of Africa. She paved the way through and is still doing it right now, helping children through an ophthalmic caravan. In six years, it's the fifth medical mission. After 15 years in blindness for some children, it's their first time to see. I wrote blindness. It's their first time to see. Eyes colored in blind, shutters closed, hearts raining, thundering tear storm. Two locked arms carry a key to freedom. If they embrace left, that invisible ventricle traces back childhood. Chambers never searched for accustomed to which they weren't accustomed. Dating dropped, mating lost. Children never came, baby rocking, some tree topping, for formula to reach, no taste. Reflection missed, eyes never kissed, baby in rushes, lullaby seeds, old tales true. Singing currents to milky shores, Welcome, cranes wander around, whisper futures gone mute. Thank you. Thank you, Mimi. Our next reader calling in from um, Ghana is uh, Nati Ogli. And Anani uh, had two partners. I know for a while he was partners uh, with um, Siamara. And before that, who is your other partner, Nettie? Um, Radia. Oh, Radia. Yes. That's right, yeah. Radia. OK, great. Well, welcome, Nettie. Uh, thank you so much. And greetings to everybody. OK, so. Um, my exchange um, took us to one other topic. I think it's, it's also with uh, where I am from. And I, I picked up from where Zemora left with her last statement, which says, um, well, I wish I could say I'm straight up old school love. Yes, so there it goes. Well, I wish I could say I'm straight up old school love. That era when love was pure as fresh palm wine, we do from above. Oftentimes, my grandmother would share tales of her love for my grandfather. Wish I could fly back into time, but I would need a magic wand and a grand feather. Wishes will never be horses, so I guess I have no choice than to glance feather. So let me tell you where I am from. I am from that place where fireflies trapped in bottles gave us light. I am from that place of wit and survival where you prove your manhood by the number of victories recorded in fight. Oh, yeah, and there were also those other boys whose victories were the number of virgins they conquered with their manly might. Yes, I am from that place where your level of freedom is determined by another man's right, where your future is calculated before your first breath and right before you open your eyes. We, we, we live and leave a major part of our dreams in our mother's wombs before we greet the earth. You see, I grew up in a society where the elders are stewards of wisdom, so they foretell your future right from birth. It's only when you turn 30 that you truly begin to live your own life. The lucky ones do well to preserve their drive until that age when they are old enough to endure a night inside a beehive. I also grew up in a society where, where your uncle has the family right to spoil you, where those who saw the sun ahead of you give you mentoring to help you avoid a lot of, that, a lot of what you would have had to toil through. Toddlers were also allowed to eat the soil too. Now I miss the Easter that came with Hosanna and palm branches. I sure do miss the apata, where we made merry 
in our Christmas with no sheets or blankets. I miss the Kwekwanansi days. His double brains and cunning ways. Oh, yes. I miss those times we lived in clay houses. It was only in Christmas that we got brand new trousers. We learned to cherish and take care of our little. Thus, every boy or girl had to keep a thread and a needle. So just in case you stretch a little bit too much, you could patch up in the middle. Never will I want to trade my watch a palm wine. Fufu, Banku, and Okro stew. Never will I want to trade my rich culture, festival, story sites, and sea view. Never will I want to trade my black self for a new you. I will therefore smile and be grateful for where I am from, in a land where our monsters were real, not Scooby-Doo's phantom. So in my next life, given the chance to choose where I want to come from, I would still choose to come from the motherland, Ghana, Africa, for this is where I am strong. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just love hearing these poems from the book and I just love hearing the exchange that happened. Um, it's so lovely to see everyone here tonight. Um, our next poet is Ade and Ade um, is calling in from Oakland as well. Um, that's where I am. And he, his poet was, his partner was Emmanuel. Um, welcome brother Adeshima. Thank you so much, Sister Carla, and greetings, everyone. Uh, I am going to read my poem. Actually, I'm going to read our pairing, and our theme was our mothers. And so, I'm going to share uh, share a story of my mother. <sighs> Death stole her before 8 a.m. with her two sons by her side. I never told you this, but one of them heard her last sigh. In that moment, she was he was blind and lost his sight. In an instant, he was in a flashback bouncing on her thigh. At that moment of her death, he did ask God why, but he knew she was going up to a place high in the sky. The day before, family and friends all came by to pay their last respects and to say goodbye. They could tell her last moments on earth were nigh. These last moments spent were sweet like apple pie. Each of the immediate family got to spend a night connecting with her and hoping they might say all the things they wanted to that night about all the good and things that brought her life. The family took turns touching her soft skin, not tight. They knew death was around the corner, but tried not to fright. At any moment, the spirit of death very well might take a whole lot more than just her sight. It would take her entire life. And with gratitude, they knew she was no longer, she no longer had to fight. And her only job was to walk towards the light. And I'm gonna transition into what uh, Emmanuel, uh, we like to call him brother a combo, his wrenchy connection. And her only job was to walk towards the light. She always told her some time will tell, the time the world will hear them like Christmas and a church bell. Like this global village, you don't need to go to the market to buy or sell. The greatest misfortune is marrying a woman with the mind of a girl. In my office, my apple teased my Dell. Example of time will tell. He complained, we are poor. Our poverty is like a chronic sore. Even miracles couldn't get to the poverty's core, nor uproot its roots like life's floor. Mother still said, time will tell. He complains, my mates look better. Their girls prettier, travel further. Mother still said, time will tell. He always stares at the clock. He prays to God not to be a son, but at least it's flogged. The good shepherd is always on his blog. Mother's time wasn't on watch, but calendar, or before her son, she was a car lender. Created an investment account for her son, which was inspired by her husband. All, as all hopes seemed to fade away, on his 20th birthday, a call came from the bank. The boy now goes to mom's grave to grieve, mom's grave to grieve. For mom knew on his 20th birthday, he would be a billionaire. But before his 20th birthday was his trial to no poverty, to enable him to appreciate property. Our mom is God. Thank you, appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much, Adashima. 
Um, our journey was so amazing. Um, people have started businesses, people have kept in contact. Uh, there have been a few um, romance love stories, I guess, ending in a wedding, if, if I can share. Um, it's just been so beautiful. So I would like to bring up um, our next reader, Imani Todd. Welcome. Um, um, Imani is calling in from Hayward and Imani's partner. Ah, I should look the book. Imani, can you share who your partner was when you come on? Yes, one second. Oh, Imani's partner was Zafua. Go ahead, Imani. Okay, give me, sorry, one second, Carla. Okay, while we're waiting for Imani, I'm gonna go ahead and read my poem. Um, my poem. So we had a theme uh, about the ancestors and so, um, and my partner was actually Sir Black, who was the um, other, who ran a Holocausta. And so Sir Black and I spent most of our time going back and forth, kind of just doing logistics. But every once in a while, we'd get a poem written. And so um, on the theme of the ancestors is where I sort of hooked in here. And so my poem is called The Present. I am the present, the gift of the here and now. The love we give in the moment under the shining sun is the gift. When under the mango tree, gentle rain falls, cleansing off dust, tattered leaves. Stand tall, hold your shoulders back. Imagine a light from your head to the sky. Open your throat chakra and listen with your voice. Surround yourself with a shawl of moonbeams. Let butterflies into your soul and be thankful in rainbow colors. Your ancestors gave you life and soon you will be one too. Give back to the community with deeds, not words. May your prayers be grateful. You have so many talents. Open your soul to the ocean of love before you. Thank you. So Imani, you're gonna bring us home. All right, our final reader. Let's welcome Imani Todd. Hello, hey guys. I'm so sorry. I'm on my way to uh, the SARS protest in downtown Oakland for Lake Merritt, which I'm sure all of you, I know you all know about SARS, what's happening in Nigeria. Um, to all my Ghanaian friends, I miss you guys so much. All my, all my friends everywhere on this video right now, I miss you all, can't wait to see you. Okay, sorry, uh, to get to the point. I cannot find Ajua's poem, but I'm going to read mine. So this poem is called, I Am From, and um, yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. It brings back so many memories. And here we go. Oh, I just had it up. I'm sorry, guys. I just had it up. I don't know. Okay. Oh, actually, I do. Okay, I have Zia Fua's. So I'm going to read Zia Fua's and then I will read mine. I am from, I am Waffle Iron in Black Tea Friday Nights. I am from Royal Palm serenaded driveways, high, high walls, paintbrushes, and Saturday morning jazz music. I am from a parku and giddy glow matrimony, two extremes of an ethnic spectrum, an unlikelihood. I am from a breed of women waging wars on their traumas, chasing demons and God. God, living in their arthritic bodies, I am from deserted sea, ravaged a bowl of here where the oceans brings back memories with each tide it rolls in, from Akple and anchovies. I am Klikor and its shrines. I am Klikor and its church bells. I am constricting lungs and bulimia and chronic anxiety. But because I am father's purple heart and mother's prayer bead, I continue to rise, to remind my spirit of its resilience, to be the grace, to stay, I am from a long line of preachers and poets, of priests and orators, linguists and storytellers. 
from a lineage of heart's disease and Christmas dinner fights. Midnight's morn of loss, chest heaving in sorrow, shoulders leaning on against each other, hands held together in prayer, and men who have neglected their women. I am a trinket in a collection of scrap metal. The anomaly ministers touch on a baptismal lake, a rippling of God's miracle, the standout and the moon for a mouth, perfect for speaking dreams into existence, wings for wrists, perfect for gathering dreams turned reality from metaphors turned grenade to break traditions of silence. Ooh. Imani, so can you yes. stay on camera? I, I'm so sorry, I can, I'm can. i trying to, but it's not working every time I pull up the link. And I have no idea, I, my room is a mess right now because I just finished making my sign. I cannot find my book. I don't know where it is. I'm so sorry, guys. <sighs> um. Just that do was the yes. poem you have memorized because we only got two minutes. Just do Ooh. it. Whatever okay. poem you have in your head, just read that poem. Okay, got it. Okay. <clears throat> Empty promises dispensed in words I never gave a consequence. Same bullshit. You love me, but you can't commit to words you say. It's good. This coconut rum making that pain go away. He want to play dumb while he throws shade on my name. And is it too insane or inhumane to wish you would never speak to me again? To wish every time you made me smile, you knew my hurt. To wish every time you would held me, I could reverse. To break this curse of broken hearts and sleepless nights, I despise the lies you told me while you looked into my eyes. Brown pupils were your steeples to proclaim your ego. But see, my heart chakra too clean, the purest green like she go. How could you can possibly stop me? I'm the queen that she know. Sheba makes up my anatomy, so why are you even asking me? For another chance? Pfft, doubt it. Oh, you got a good reason? I can do without it. I'm going to take your actions collectively to summarize just how you had my back, dissectomy. It's funny how you tried to steal the queen's heart, felony, and now you're just a, a king missing a chess piece, incomplete. Thank you. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thanks, much, guys. everyone. Um, that's the end of our reading, and we're so glad that all of you came. Please visit our website. Uh, West Oakland to West Africa.com and buy our book. And um, also, you can find out more about our organization if you want to join us for our next exchange. So, thank you so much. And thanks to all my readers and to my Awotawa family.